In order for us to write source code for our own language, such as this, we will need to be able to represent it as something other than plain text, something that is easier to work with. As such, we are going to define source code for our language. Our source code will have rules, and therefore, we can write algorithms that will manipulate it. And in this process of building an interpreter, one of the first things that we do is convert our source code into tokens. And I will define a token in just a moment. This transformation from source code into tokens is called lexical analysis. And typically, we build a class called a lexer in order to perform it. So what the hell is a token? A token is just a small, easily categorized data structure that we can eventually feed to a parser, which we will again learn about in later lessons. Stay with me. For example, say that in our language, or as part of our source code, we want to have a token that we call digit. This means that as we work through our source code, anytime we see a number from zero to nine, we would say that this source code converted to a token is a digit token. We can do the same thing for say a minus sign and assign it to a token that we call minus. And we can do the same thing for any number of tokens that we want for our language. So let's go ahead and define the tokens for our language. Let's use an example to guide us. Say we have the following that we want our source code to eventually look like. What kind of tokens do we see here? Well, right off the bat, we have our digits that we just talked about. We have these special words that aren't variable names, but they do prefix variable names and functions names. These belong to our language keywords, and we will call these tokens let and func. The names of actual variables and functions, we will throw in a category of token called ID, like X, Y, result, and results, or the function name plus. Then we see a bunch of special characters, which we will separate into distinct categories. We don't want them all under the same token of, say, special, because left parentheses won't mean the same thing as right parentheses. So we will have one for left paren, right paren, left bracket, right bracket, comma, and semicolon, and exclamation point. And we can go on like this, defining arbitrary tokens to help us provide structure to our language. Some tokens will have a value associated with them, like an integer or an ID, and we want to store these alongside the token type. And this is called a lexeme. If we have a piece of source code that looks like let x equal to nine, the token type of our source code character x is ID and the lexeme is x. Or if we have our digit in our source code nine, the type of this source code character is digit and the lexeme is nine. So let's actually code our token data structure. I'm going to be doing this in Go, but you are welcome to follow along for any language you prefer. Type the following. All we're doing here is defining a type called token type that is just a string. In another language, you could use something like an enum for your token types. Next, let's define our possible token types as string constants. And most of these should be self-explanatory if you've programmed before. EOF just means end of file, and that token will be used later on for our parser as a sign that we are done. Illegal means that we have been fed some source code that we don't recognize and that we haven't defined, and the parser can throw it up later. So altogether, the token file should look something like this. And with that, we have begun to form the structure of our language. We have defined some characters and symbols and keywords that we are going to allow as part of our source code. We haven't dealt with any syntax or semantics yet, as that comes with writing the parser. All we are concerned about with right now is being able to convert source code into these easily digestible tokens. And that'll do it for this video. In the next video, we are going to begin writing our lexer, which will take our source code and break it down into these different tokens.